opportunity to take away that first seed. And a lot of people might look at seeding and say, oh, it's just seeding. You know, you've already qualified for the quarterfinals. But let me remind you, the first seed teams that we have in this group, uh, in this tournament, you got double seven M, you got FaZe. Those two are bloody scary. You do not want to be playing against them. Yeah. Fury know it. They have to play them every week in BR6 and elevate would certainly not want to be going up against one of those Brazilian behemoths. They would much rather coast against some second seed team in the quarterfinals. The first band to go out will be the Ying, followed up by the Maverick for the attacking bands. Pretty interesting as well, Ying being taken out by Furia. I wonder why that is. That's a curious one for me. And Valkyrie being taken out by Astralis. That is totally fair enough. All of the Furia players, especially Rare, especially Fantasy, are very proficient on that operator and they're happy to take that one out. The final defense band to go through, though, on the side of Furia, what will it be? Mm, what are we going to see? Kaid. All right. So no Thatcher required for those basement attacks to open up those hatches. Thatcher is in, however, but some teams just prefer not to run it. Looking back, Furia have actually kind of banned all kinds of different things on this map, sometimes the mirror, which in this case is left in. That being said, though, Furia don't look like they're going to lean into the mirror for their first defense, going down to laundry and supply room, and looking like they're going to go for a very extended roam aided by the Oryx, Mute Jammers, Intel Denial on the side of Rare, as well as the Vigil of Fantasy. I love a Vigil player who actually brings bulletproof camera. There's a few yeah. and far between. I mean, yeah, if you can do some amazing things with your impact grenades, fair play to you, as most Vigils are want to pick that more selfish utility but if you can bring something for the team, I respect that. Now, Fury, uh, Fury have been playing phenomenally as a team. They have been spot on. Uh, they have made a, a huge comeback in this group. It looked like it was Elevate and, and the rest in this uh, Group D. And that quickly changed today when Elevate lost their first two games. Fury are 7-1 of them on this map. Uh, Astralis, I mean, there's not a lot in this game for them. If anything, uh, for Astralis, it's, it's pride, like I was saying before. Now, they're the second worst rated team at the tournament right now with their performance. If they win this game, they go up to the fifth worst rated team in the tournament, which is not bad. I'll give them that. And look, I'm afraid we can't give Forrest anything except for a couple of bullets to the phrase, thanks to STK. That being said, Astralis, they have a fairly good read of this roam game. They re-picked onto the Jackal, and they've got the Dokkabi in the hands of DB Fire as well, looking to try and make swift entry, but a little bit too swift for Forrest, unfortunately being taken down by STK. The rest of these Astralis players being very cautious entering into the building, contested at every other angle. Fantasy will take down Iconic. Can he get a second? Looking desperately. Prone. Behind. Pretty ragged cover. J90 trying to punish, but you can see he's a bit scared. Shuttle jabated into walking straight into rare, covering the hallway. Furia working together. This is embarrassing. Fantasy's found the double, looking to finish it off. DP fire shut down. Look at that with the C75. Oh, well, that was quite a round from Furia, but I'll give Astralis this. They're having a laugh. Astralis, that was not too promising from them. They entered into the building without any intel whatsoever. There was no way to join in Forest. He couldn't have anticipated that the hatch might have been open from STK. Same thing going through Small Tower. The pre-placed drones, they must have been shot out early and they couldn't make that roam clear work for them. Even trying to get the timing, the hop in through the shower window was far too late as Vera players were all coming over to back up their teammates stuck inside a big tower. Well, let's see if Furia can keep up this momentum, Mandy. To be frank, it looks like Astralis is a bit dejected. They have been seemingly this whole tournament long, and I feel like that goes two ways. Either you're a team and you've been knocked out, and you're like, all right, whatever, let's just give it our best. Let's you know, No pressure anymore. We know that it doesn't matter how good or bad we perform. It's the same result, so let's just give it a good crack. And some teams are rejuvenated by a philosophy like that. Other teams, it just compounds and it gets worse and worse. Whether it's infighting, whether it's a lack of confidence in yourself, in your teammates, these things start to seep in. Unfortunately, it looks like that's the direction Astralis is going. They haven't really got this second wind that I would have hoped. Furia, they're actually throwing a curveball at Astralis for the second round. They're not taking them up to Kids and Dorms, which is usually the next bomb site. Instead, they're going to take us down to Kitchen and Meeting. Astralis, they'll start off their clear through Small Tower. A few cutoffs being held by Forrest and one of his teammates just outside of Lobby. But so far, so good. 
for Astralis. No one has died within the first 10 seconds. That's a plus. Fantasy, though, once again, being the first to contest the entry. TP fire, good drone work, but oh no. Rare once again, an aggressive run out from the small tower. Funnily enough, caught on camera, but not before Shuttle loses his life. He's had a really rough tournament. Astralis themselves have had a really rough tournament. It is so tough to get in the building from these Furio players. Every single one of them is holding a point of entry. Some holding on Small Tower, great read from them. Meanwhile, Fantasy as well, through that double window, anticipating a possible top-down clear Furio. They are just there in every which way, and the cutoffs they haven't worked out in Astralis' yeah. favour. No, they certainly haven't. Astralis looking a little bit lost. Attacking onto uh, a site where, I mean, yeah, there's, there are some direct ways in. You can walk straight into the site from Tower, but... Realistically, it's a lot more difficult than that. And you're trying to take all this map control that Furia is aggressively contesting. It becomes very, very difficult. Now, though, Nook has been a very stable pick throughout this entire major, and Iconic is actually deciding to bring it. Now, the last time they played against each other, Nook was banned out for Iconic, and this time he's trying to make use of it as much as he can, but no. it's all falling apart for Astralis. Anyway, they couldn't make anything of it. Actually, Iconic able to claw one back onto SDK. Yeah, and Forrest has actually found a really good advanced position. Oh. oh, my God! Iconic! Finally! This is the man we've been waiting for. This is the guy that we know can get the job done. Miracle and Handy now. Oh no, Iconic just misses that. Oh, Miracle around the corner with the shotty. Forrest falls back, but he's got to make sure that Diffuser stays protected. It is a one versus two, and Handy will do a handy job with that Diffuser. Miracle to cover. This is an awkward engagement, and Miracle wins it out. Forrest manages to deny the de counter Diffuse, but Miracle once again, the Miracle worker on these clutches. I'd really doubted that Nook pick from Iconic the moment that I started saying they weren't getting value out of it. Of course, he's the one to waltz into the site and get a 2k. But in the end, Furia, they work that retake once the bomb had gone down, collecting that kill with a big 3-2-1 swing, covering up the plant, and Miracle is able to clean up the refrag and eventually win out the round a second for Furia. And we're seeing a bit of a pattern here, mm -hmm. Mandy. Astralis, just earlier against Eminem, lost two rounds in a row. And they immediately go for a tactical timeout. And, uh, well, same story here. Unfortunately for them, they only managed to find one round on the back of it. Now, I feel that this, this tactical timeout is for a very different reason than the Eminem tactical timeout. The Eminem tactical timeout, they looked very, very disconnected on their attack. They were all trying to do something individually but on this attack they look like they're on the same page they look like they're going for the roam clear together we saw it even just in that last round iconic he doubled up with one of his buddies to flood the site they are on the same page the comms are working out for them this feels more like a macro thing how are they going to shut down these furia players who are so confident on this roam early on in the game it's a great question uh, if I knew what to do when the okay, enemy is working. running around swinging, hitting all their shots, I'd probably be a lot higher ranked, to be honest with you. But sometimes you just don't know how to deal with it. Sometimes you're playing against a player who just swings and first bullet headshots you, and you're like, man, how does he get away with that? Sometimes you're playing against someone who's holding a position like small tower, and you've got three players pushing him, and yet they still get away with it. That's the story of Fury of this game. They played so aggressively. I, I just think that the mental game has already been won. Like, Fury know they can win this game, but it's not even that. It's like they know they have won this game. It's Astralis who need to claw their way out of this pit, and it is so difficult to do. Well, I wouldn't just call it just yet Astralis. Last time they took their tactical timeout onto Eminem, they were able to pick up some momentum and get back into it. Obviously, call out a big mind for this game. I can only assume he's been helping them out. But SDK looking for a cheeky spawn peak. Someone trying to repel up to the small tower. Do the shots connect? They don't, but he's still holding on. This is the opportunity for Astralis now. They know that SDK is isolated. Now, he has quite a bit of util. A mute jammer and two ADSs to protect him, but Iconic has droned it all out. This is a good job from Astralis. They just need to follow through. SDK is still holding on the logic bomb, being deployed by DB Fire, trying to keep track of his position. Nice. Shuttle even making use of the space, making his way through Shower, trying to connect the vertical grenade, but SDK, he's long oh. gone. And SDK 
does manage to find one before he is taken out. Sneaking down the stairs, perfect timing, and using the lines of sight in that dining wall, he manages to at least play for the one. Miracle, though, low on HP. Him and Handy managed to clutch previously, but it's not going to happen two times in a row because Jay Nani has taken advantage of the space afforded to him. Astralis looking very, very good. They're poised to take their first round on the back of that tactical time at Handy has been abused. Careful, mate. Don't walk into the Capcan traps. And also be careful of this rotation because Handy's actually made his way back into lobby. Oh no, and the defuse hasn't been picked up for Astralis yet. Could they be caught out by Handy? That's the defuse in the hands of Forrest. He's not going to go through the ground floor. He knows Handy might be there and is going to hop into the safety of his teammates instead. Still holding on, but where can the flank come from? How can he isolate these one-on-ones? It's going to be difficult to do because Astralis have set up very comfortable positions, very confident holding these angles, playing together. Uh-oh. All right, Astralis, don't get too ahead of yourselves. This is winnable for Handy. 1v3. J90, J90, oh my god. I thought he was going to lose that for a second, but J90 does hold on. Careful for Astralis, don't get too ahead of yourselves, but they have finally got another round on the back of that tack pause. And that was well played from Astralis as well. While they were distracted inside of Small Tower, they actually weren't. They were making use of the space, the disconnect in the Roma Furia. They knew that SDK was stuck where he was, and they knew his teammates were going to come over and try and help him as they pushed through Small Tower. Being able to insert their entry of Attack shuttle into uh, inside of dining, cutting off those rotations and playing their entry meant that the defense of Furia was sliced right in half. Eventually, SDK was taken down from the refrags, giving them an advantage to Astralis is all they needed to take that round. Yeah, and they're on the board now, which is good. And I'll say it again. i got to respect Astralis for the way in which they're handling this. So this has been a, such a challenging tournament for them. And after winning that round, after, um, you know, the team kill and uh, it being a little bit difficult, uh, J9, actually, sorry, it was Forrest. It was, uh, was having a laugh. Like, they're, they're, mm -hmm. they're still enjoying themselves. They know that, look, it's not every day you get to fly across the world and play a couple of games of Siege, walk away with SI points and $5,000. So they're making the most of what they have left. Astralis, they're beginning yet another attack onto the basement. Fury are actually changing their philosophy completely. They're not looking for a roam anymore and instead bunkering down on the site with the aid of the flash shields. The small tower push seems to be the way for Astralis, wary of someone that might be playing on the stairs, but there is in fact no one there. They've been given the map entirely to themselves, the ground floor at their disposal. Love this clash idea. A lot of heavy anchor operators for Fury is going to make it very hard to crack that site. The step one's the roam clear and it looks like it's pretty free for Astralis for now. A lot of contest. But they need to be careful because at a moment's notice, Furia might walk up the stairs. Could be rare. Could be fantasy up the laundry stairs. We're seeing how Furia are not afraid of getting a little bit aggressive. But not just yet for Furia, it's about finding the right timing. And they know right now Astralis are going to have their guns trained. They are in their room clear phase, and so the comms are clear on this entry. This is not the time for Rare to go for the peak. He knows it, and he falls back down into Pillar. J90 now holding control onto meeting, setting up those flank drones in anticipation that Furia might go for that retake later on. All right. Astralis, you've managed to roam clear. That's great. But what are you going to do about the site? Are you going to push Freezer? At the moment, it, it feels like they're just trying to cover off all of their options, open up as many hatches as possible, and they haven't really telegraphed where this push is going to come from. But you've got the Clash in Freezer. You've got a Smoke, you've got a Warden, you've got Thunderbird to heal up. They have so many heavily fortified positions. It feels like Astralis need to just make a call and commit. I don't mind what they're doing here. They're actually scattering around the Furia plays because there's one player at each nice. entry. A lovely grenade as well from DP Fire. Everyone is worried about where the push is from. Oh. Now with that opening, that's their invitation into the site. I love that from Forrest. Drops down the electrical hatch, but Furia come to life in the guns. The kill feed is all orange. Astralis now in the disadvantage. They have time, but they lost the element of surprise. It's going to be so difficult to brute force this while you've got that clash. Forrest goes in for the entry. Got the diffuser, though, and he is caught out. It's not gone so well here for the Americans as Furia hold on tightly. Their grasp on this bomb site. Immovable. And Furia locks in yet another round.
Astralis. That was such an unfortunate attempt at a push. They thought they had the opening, but they got too overexcited on that electrical hatch drop. Unfortunate for them because that was such a clean nade from DP5, but they mm. hadn't accounted for all of the other positions that they might be dropping into. The crossfire was so good from Furia, holding onto the site. They were ready for that tempo to come through, even though they tried to capitalize on the element of surprise. I really like the idea with the electrical hash drop. It wasn't just, uh, let's drop hash. There was a little bit of extra spice to it. The bucket opened up a rotation into blue, and then they immediately walked into blue from electrical instead of kind of being in that... Uh, Killbox position when you're really vulnerable. So Astralis, you know, they've got some ideas, they've got some nice little thoughts, and they did manage to get a very dominant round just two rounds ago onto this very bomb site of Kids Dorms, Dorms Main Hall. They're going to be able to repeat that. I'm not sure as of yet. Furious still feel very favoured to me. They just feel like they hit their stride. And I've got a feel for Astralis in that last round. I agree with you. That felt like a really great idea from them. And it almost felt like it was at the right time as well. But in the end, the gunfights just didn't go their way. And they're really struggling with this entry at the moment. They've lost the first pick multiple times now to Furia players. And it's about having that man advantage in their favor to play the trades. And the timing is really everything. And he's actually made his way up to tower, T3. He's also checked for drones, so he's going to be in that position undetected, and he's going to, be able to do a lot of damage for there. The droning is made more difficult by that mozzie pest, which is going to slow down the Astralis information game. STK shoots another drone as well and falls back immediately. Wow, this is a very extended roam from Furia. They've got players on the ground floor in the basement. Fantasy, he has some idea that they might be putting some pressure onto Lobby. Rare, though, he will be the first to kick it off with a pick of his own. It's not great there for Iconic. So unfortunate. Astral is so separated. They're trying their best to isolate these roamers, but it's become so difficult for them. DP Fire now moving into Kitchen. He's got to worry about the Vert. Miracle above. Rare below. Fantasy still on this roam. Fury are so separated, but it's the same case for Astralis. It feels like Astralis haven't decided which point they're going to contest. They're actually going to commit to this roam clear in the basement first off Forest to enter his way through Freezer. He seems to know that Fantasy is there, but it doesn't matter because Rare is there to back him up. Hold on to that ground floor. Actually, they're further committing to it. Shuttle to be taken down by Rare. Thank goodness the retrades come in from Astralis. Yeah. But unfortunately, it does leave Astralis with a numbers disadvantage. The Dockerby, though, can hack cams and give a little bit more information to Astralis. But Fury are just everywhere. What are Astralis to do? DP Fire, keeping his way up the freezer stairs. A flashbang to go out. It does push SDK back, but not flash for long. Oh. He can take down DP Fire. Fury to pick up yet another round. Let's dominate. 4 1 now. Astralis, though, still fist bumps, still looking in decent spirits. They know that it's a tough game. Fury are very happy about it. And Fury may well know that only two more rounds, Mandy, locks them in to first seed in Group D. It has been Brazil's tournament right now. It has. We've got every group with a Latin American team at the very top, with the exception of Exet, who uh, have three Brazilians on their roster anyway. Hmm. There you go. Fury are... They have made these defenses very tough for Astralis. Astralis, they seem to be struggling in the team play aspects at the moment on the attack. Each round, they improved that, however. That time, they had all four players look for the roam clear. It was just a little bit disjointed. It's just in the details. But the problem that they are facing in Furia is that there are just so many possible points of pressure, of contests that they have to worry about in the back of their minds, that they can really only commit to one thing at a time. And in the midst of that chaos, that's where Furia have been, have been thriving so well. Well. Five seconds left. Uh, and they are dictating the chaos. Astralis haven't been able to instill the sense of order that they need to deal with the cheeky, uh, aggressive plays from Furia. Tough to get a handle on. Astralis now giving it yet another crack. The last attempt here on this attacking side, re-attempting this meeting attack. Don't believe this was the one that, yeah, they, they failed to attack this previously. It was just kids' dorms that they won. Fury have been so difficult to, to pick apart. 
That being said, I do like this approach from Astralis. They don't want to roam clear anyone because they know that the defense and the roam of Fury is so multifaceted. So they're saying, let's just commit all our utility, all our guns, to one point oh of entry. God. But it doesn't matter, J90. That was a bit silly of you. The breach was getting opened. Yeah, he just sprinted on through tower willy-nilly. Fortunately, Astralis do find a pick of their own. Miracle with the long-range shotgun. Shuttle has forced his way into sight. But it's not enough. It's all on Iconic. Wants to pick up his teammate, worried about a flank. Miracled around the corner with the shotgun. Iconic gets him. 1v2, soon to be a 2v2. The revive comes through, it's hurt out. Iconic taken down, rare's good for both of them. It's a 5-1 half for Furia. And once again, unfortunate for Astralis. It felt like they had the right idea once again. It felt like they were trying to set the tempo, press the attack onto this Furia roam, but they reconvene. All of the Furia players come back to the site immediately, all on the same page. No matter what Astralis try and do, they cannot throw these players off. This neural network of Furia players on the defense is just so difficult to break. If Astralis try and hard hunt the roamers, Furia win the trade. If Astralis tried to hard push the site, Furia win the trade. What are Astralis to do? Go on to their defense half, apparently. Hopefully they find more success here. Down four rounds currently in this matchup. Now taking us down to Laundry and Supply historically has been quite a de defender-sided bomb site. Looking for an extended roam, opening up this meeting hatch as well as dedicating two reinforcements as well to try and stop the onslaught of the Furia entry. Look, Astralis do have a higher defense win rate than attack win rate on this map. Furia are very good on their de defense. They win 83% of their defense rounds. But Furia are also uncharacteristically good at attacking Oregon. They win 60% of their rounds. You'd expect, based on that, that they'd win four from six, right? Dev, there's a Sens. I cannot wait to oh see Sens. It feels like forever since I've seen this operator in the lobby. <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah, I mean, you don't see Sens very often. Why is that? I mean, what is Furia going to try and do with it that most teams wouldn't expect it to be val uh, valid? If I knew, I would tell you, but I have no <laughs> idea. Furia, they're beginning their clear onto Big Tower. Iconic will be the first point of contest. The entry coming out from STK. He gets aggressive on this window, but can he find anything of it? It's good info from Furia on this position. They've droned it. Oh no, they're going to force their way oh, into sight. The no. EMP's going to deactivate the Banshee. Where is everyone from Astralis? There's nobody in the basement except for Forrest who rotates down. No. Fantasy takes that 1v1. He has the basement all to himself. Furia are so close to locking in first seed in the playoffs. Iconic and Shuttle have got something to say about it. It's a desperate retake. DP fire the end. Who mad air jabs are going off everywhere. And Furia just have two players up and standing. Rare goes down. This has been a very strange round. I have never seen a full five player retake onto the basement, but Astralis, they made it work. Now, if you've ever seen a round of Siege like that, you're <laughs> lying to me, all of you at home. You are lying to me. Longer. That was something else coming out from Furia. They tried to set the tempo in two parts of the map, once in the big tower. Meanwhile, they realized, hang on a second, the site is completely free, but Astralis, they repeat what Furia were able to do. That retake was so fast from them. All of them jumped back on the same page. They patiently waited for each other to play the refrags. We saw that big tower retake through that Sens wall was perfect. Perfect from Astralis. That was wonderful. And coming back down the back stairs, they were able to play the trades back out into Furia. And what an odd round that was. Yeah, that's one word for it. Odd. I really don't know how to describe that one. I mean, Furia had one player on site, and every other player in the server was off site. But uh, oh well, you can't dwell on the past. Astralis stave off defeat for a bit longer, and Furia still haven't found that elusive sixth round. At the moment, Elevate still stands at the top of this group, and therefore first seed going into playoffs. Furia chasing to steal that away. I like this from Astralis. This is something a little bit special. They're playing the mirror to aid the roam downstairs, anticipating that Furia will want to play the vertical grenades. They have four sets of grenades in their hand, and they don't want their anchors on the site to die out to just willy-nilly the grenades trying to go fishing for them, and so they're holding it onto the ground floor for as long as they can. Fantasy will be the first to entry on the nook uh, okay. through Zulu, seemingly undetected, and Elamine to go out. He does be concussed by it. Forrest, can he connect the shots? Oh, yes, he can! Very nice flick there. 
Can't believe Forrest survived that. He barely did so low on HP. Furia is keen to hunt down and refrag that pick. SDK is starting to drone out this ground floor hold. This is looking very scary from DP Fire, but STK shows no fear. Straight into bathroom and a grenade to follow through. Oh! <laughs> DP Fire caught that in his pocket, I think. Perfect nade, nullifies the position in kitchen. A pivotal player to take down. Quickly respotted out. Forrest is retaking the position, but he's so low on HP. Mirror opened now. Rare in a significant advantage here. Astralis feeling the pressure now as the vertical nades, as you alluded to, start to come through. And I'll tell you what, there's still about five nades left in the pocket of Furia. Uh -oh. Forrest, who could be in a world of trouble. Anytime soon, the drone to follow through. Now, which one of these players is about to cook a grenade? It's STK. There he goes, looking for a vertical grenade. Not onto... Oh, actually, it's rare. Here it goes. To fly through onto the rotate. Oh, oh, no! Can he survive it? Oh, it's STK. Look the other way. Astralis. They make it work. Shuttle to support from above. And Furia looking a little bit silly. They had such an advantage. And now it's a 2v4, 1v4 for Handy. How did this turn around? Astralis, it's just a formality to quickly punt the ball into the hole. Handy, the last one left. They've got info as well. You can see Astralis not overzealous. They don't want to let this one slip between their fingers. And he's going to try and make it work one at a time. Ran in the corner. Surely he gets this one. Oh, no. Morris, he knows about it. And the re -pig from Iconic is perfect. Astralis, they turned that one around. Oh, dear, Furial. That wasn't very calculated from them. They wanted to go for that roam clear, and they almost did. The grenades, they were able to connect. But what they didn't realize was that the rest of the Astralis players playing that anchor were still holding onto that top floor, and that gave them a lot of vertical pressure that they were able to put onto the players of Furia trying to enter in through the kitchen. And even poor SDK trying to walk in through security, he he had the number of forests, and forests was like, okay, all right, mate, I'm in the corner. You're checking the wrong one. I'm going to take <laughs> you down with me. Cheeky little rat. Gets it though, he makes it work. Survives with low HP from the open engagement. Doesn't it make you wonder, right? Imagine Forrest had lost that early engagement to, uh, I can't remember who it was, was it Rare on the... Uh, Fantasy. Fantasy, there you go, on the nook. Imagine that had gone Furious way. Completely changes the whole round. And it goes to show the impact of little engagements like that, little opening picks. Especially when Furia are being so aggressive. Feels like every round someone's in the building in the first 20 seconds. seconds left before and if I can't, I don't know about you, but I can't help but like smile throughout this game. This game oh, yeah. has been such a fun one to watch. This is a great way to close out our final cast of the group stage. These two teams providing us with such great entertainment here in the server. That's it. This is definitely a game uh, that, I mean, it, it's not qualifying a team for playoffs, but it can still have a big impact for these teams. Like Furia, for example, to get one more round. They're locked in for the first seed. Astralis, I mean, this is more just pride, but uh, they're currently the second worst team in the tournament. If they can win this, they'll go up to being the fifth worst team in the tournament. I would take that. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, I'd take that. Oh. You don't want to go from being the second best in Charlotte to the second worst in Berlin. This time, though, Furia changing their approach. They don't want to walk in the building straight away, anticipating that the Australis players still will be ready for that tempo this time, now taking it much more slowly. Some outside of lobby, some outside of big tower, pushing, putting the pressure onto the site, perhaps forcing some of these roamers to retake into a more close position, something more claustrophobic. But look at this from Rare and Fantasy. Once again, he just walks straight on in. Direct trade, though. DP fire goes down, but at least he played his life. Rare's actually going to get this plant down. Shuttle is not uh, going to be able to... No, he is going to be able to deny it. Where is the cover? What is going on? Astralis starting to gain a little bit of momentum here. Furia, what has happened to you? Forrest eventually taken out. This miracle starts to march his way forward, but from here on, it's going to be a very messy attempt from Furia. All of the Astralis players have actually reconvened around that diffuser. They know that it's the mission critical part of this attack that they just need to hold on to. Just one objective, and that is it now. A miracle to be taken down, leaving Handy in the one versus three. It's not looking too promising. Yeah, we've seen Handy attempt these before and fail. Astralis, though, I mean, what a comeback from them. This is a huge step up from the, what, 4-1 start? that they saw themselves on. Now they're going to be very close to tying up this scoreline. 
They can lock in this round. Handy though, he's playing it so well. What a long shot. Both of the remaining defenders are low HP. This oh, is no. so winnable, Hanny. If he wins this fight, surely that's the round for Furia. There's no business for Furia to win this. No reason that Handy oh, no. should be able to clutch it. But he's made it a 1v1. Is he going to be able to revive Miracle? I don't think so. There's no time. He's going to have to sprint for it. He's not going to be able to. J90 to finish him off as the bleed out comes through. It's Iconic versus Handy. Such a tense situation. Both of them low HP. The diffuser, though. Oh, the Gurmine! He has to pull out. He has no choice. Iconic. 15 seconds left. He knows exactly where that diffuser was placed. And his hand, he sticks it. It's up to Iconic. He's hiding. He's going to play for post plant. Both players low HP. One bullet from either will seal the deal. Handy could gift Furia. First seed going into playoffs if he can land this. It's the tail end of a 1v3 clutch. And Iconic, so much pressure to try and land this shot. But there's Handy, misses the spray. What's going on? He's gone all the way outside. Iconic to try and take the fight with the pistol. It may be a long arm. Is Hanny going to be able to push in? There's no time. There's no way. Iconic has no choice. Handy with a handy 1v3. Furia lock in first seed into the playoffs. And by locking themselves into first seed, they escape their brothers over in Latam. They are not going to be paired up against them going into the playoffs, which is just such a huge win for them in this series. That is their work done and dusted. Iconic letting go of that post-plant situation. He had the chance to go for the counter defuse, but of course he didn't have the outlines like that we did. He didn't know that hand. He was so far away. Wow, Mandy, this has been LATAM's tournament. We have three Latin American teams, Brazilian teams to be precise, first seed in their respective groups. We are guaranteed at this point, I believe, that, no, we're not guaranteed to see a Latin American team do the same. Never mind. We're actually not guaranteed, definitely not guaranteed. But there's a, a real chance here that Latin America will be sending a good team to the semis, I think, at this point. Mm -hmm. With how well Furia, W7M, and FaZe have been playing. Even Xset, which again, technically NA, but you do got three Brazilian players on that roster. Oh, it's, uh, it's been quite a ride for Furia. Tell you what, this is just Brazil's world and we're just living in it. Yeah. That is what the story of this major has been. It's been no other region other than that. I, for one, welcome our new Brazilian overlords. I agree. Furia, they're making their way into the map very slowly, starting to poise an attack, but a mirror wound, a very aggressive being held inside of meeting, will meet the entries of Furia. They're taking their time, not exactly sure what they're going to do about it just yet. Match point, so all it takes is the formality of putting this final round in. Astralis, though, quite an extended roam, like you said, a very unusual one. Fury not used to attacking things like this, but I'm sure that they are capable. Spot out the mirror, quick call, drone out, see who's playing on it. Iconic. <laughs> Eventually does take down that drone. And the Habana pellet would be more than uh -oh. enough to deal with that mirror window. Iconic, unfortunately, doesn't have enough impacts to reattempt that one. Thankfully, though, he does fall off, so he hasn't given away his life just yet. But Jano is about to be in a world of pain. Bad times are coming his way. Iconic to try and protect his teammate over in Attic, but he gets taken down himself. Yeah, Forrest is trying to aggressively play these rear stairs with the FO12 shoddy on Ella. J90 holding in meeting. Shuttle goes down. That was on the flank from Pit. It's not looking great for the Americans here. Brazil. They're so close to locking this game in with another three-point win. Jane, I know, though, he doesn't want to give up on his hold inside of meaning. He wants to get value out of it, knowing he has to go for a hero play to bring back the man count for Astralis. And yes, he oh. does indeed, taking down SDK, but not before being traded out by Rare. And the trade is so critical here. Remember, the side is downstairs. You wouldn't be remiss for thinking it was meeting this whole time, all of these players off-site. And one of the only two remaining Astralis players, Forrest, has a shoddy, which means he's going to have to use the pistol for these long-range fights. A very precarious position to find himself in. Not only that, but he's about to be caught in the crossfire. Rare's about to come down the back stairs as two of them come through blue bunker double door. 
I knock Scanner out for Handy, but he doesn't see any feet because, well, three Astralis players are dead, in fact. There is not much to spot out. Taking their time, Fury, they will close this one out. Measure twice, cut once is their approach. But they will cut with the blade so sharp, will decapitate NA's best team. Here come Furia every time they make it to these mages, but so rarely do they have a big impact, and they're about to go all the way into the playoffs. In the first seed, DP Fire surely cannot do a damn thing. Furia dismiss Astralis 7-3. It is the LATAM show here at the Berlin Major. Furia to join their friends in the top seed of this final group. GG's coming out in the chat, and that is it. It is over for Astralis. Riled up our Furia. At the start of the day, they didn't even know if they were going to make playoffs. Now they put their best foot forward first.